you have to ask yourself, how did you bond with your parents? How did you bond with your sisters and brothers? When my brother was home watching us, we'd make grilled cheeses and make like a fort because I had a bunk bed in my room. We like to watch like really cheesy, scary movies, like the really dumb ones. Saturday mornings, uh, my mom would, would cook breakfast. She never cooks, you know, but uh, Saturday mornings, we, we can always come to her to make the same breakfast. Our tradition starts from us all getting ready, of us playing music, of there being dancing. We would hang out in our in our boxers in the living room, watch the College World Series, Little League World Series. There's a cheer that we do called the Olay. Sunday was family day. Going down the line, we all cup your hands and you tap each other's hands. When you have your child away at college and they're eating college food all the time, it's always fun to call. Our tradition was to call him and tell him about the good food that we're having here while he's having to eat that college stuff. So. And then we knit and crochet together. I cook, we sit, have dinner, and after dinner we play game. And that's one of the big things that we do um, is bring all the freshmen in, put them in the middle as we're doing that Olay cheer before our first game. We would see how many marshmallows we can fit in our mouths. So, you know, That's hey, a tradition. love you, miss you, guess what we're doing. He was given a bottle of uh, vodka, and he was told that he had to, to drink it, to drink all of it. When he passed out, uh, he was just put on a couch. There were some people who could see he was in distress, and they wanted to call for help, but they were told not to. And so he was basically just put on a futon, and, and he was left to die. He slipped into a coma, uh, uh, started turning blue, when by the time someone actually decided to call the uh, call the paramedics it was too late the lack of oxygen to his brain had done its damage and so he survived about another 24 hours my mom was freaking out and they actually told us like what was going on and i didn't i didn't think anything of it um because it's my brother like there's nothing nothing ever is going to happen to him and uh, we we had to take him off of life support and uh and uh, that's when we lost him. There were several that were heavily intoxicated. Two of them went to the hospital with alcohol poisoning. One of them died. That's when tradition isn't there. I think I would define hazing as something that makes someone feel uncomfortable and doing something that they're not willing or wanting to do. Making them think that if they don't do it, they're not going to fit in. Any action that's harmful that is used to project one's power and superiority over another. And if they fail to do whatever it is you want them to do, there's punishment for it. A culture of disrespect. It's so dumb. Anytime you're making someone feel uncomfortable or do, doing something that they don't want to be doing, but they think they need to in order to be a part of that team or feel a part of that organization, I think that can be characterized as hazing. It's not unique to Greek life. It happens on sports teams. It happens in high schools. It happens in the military. Some of the things that we often hear about in the news are those behaviors that everyone can agree are completely unacceptable and should never ever 
occur as part of a membership process, an intake process, or a welcoming process onto a team or organization. But there's also small forms of hazing that um, are still hazing. We had to wear pledge pins at all times. I didn't realize that that was a form of hazing because if we were caught without our pins, we were punished. They don't often see that leading up to that horrific event, there were many other kinds of hazing behaviors that were occurring over time. It went from zero to 100 with all the assignments we had to do. And they started from making cookies, finding signs, so many things to memorize. We had a, a sorority test. And that test took so much studying. It was just as rigorous, if not more, than taking a, another class. The rookies, it always had to be the rookies, but we had to uh, bring donuts in the morning to, to the games. So if we didn't bring donuts, we had to run laps. It's to the point where many of those behaviors are so normalized in the environment of schools and colleges and universities, and they're often referred to as, oh, those aren't hazing, those are just traditions. The little sisters were to paddle their big sisters in front of all the guys, and then the big sisters would turn around and paddle the little sisters. I also felt trapped because, I mean, there's all these guys, there's, like, everybody wants to do this. If I don't, what are they going to do to me kind of thing? All the while, the guys were telling the girls to hit her harder, hit them harder, or, you know, do it, do it. And then she hit me really hard, like I stumbled forward from the blow. And then she hugged me afterwards as if like, as if she was proud of me, as if I had done something really incredible. They came up with the word hazing as to what happened to him. He was beaten to death on a bus by his fellow band members. Not only did he, was, was he beaten, but he suffered. And that's the hard thing to accept. They not only just beat him to death, he suffered and was in pain, and they left him. And he said, there's one fraternity that stands for leadership. It would be great for my resume and for networking. And I, I said, okay, those are all really good reasons to do it, but what about hazing fraternities, haze? And he said, mom, they don't allow hazing. Hazing's illegal, so you don't need to worry about that. I checked into it. I asked them all the questions that I was fearful of. You know, do you have hazing? Absolutely not. We are not one of those schools. We are different. The sorority members let the fraternity have us for the night. They had one of our pledge members go down as a dog and drink a bowl of beer um, while everyone barked at her. I was booed and harassed because I wouldn't deep throw a banana. People had obviously warned me about hazing, like I had known that at that time that fraternities in general had this stigma, but I kind of felt like it's an, another place thing. It's not an issue here. We were blindfolded and put into a car and probably going about 80, 90 miles an hour and, and you know, shaking the wheel. So we're in the back seat doing this. Then we were brought to this waterfall and they were screaming at us, take your pants off, like take your belts off. And it was, it was a, basically a, a psychological ploy. She just showed me the room where two detectives were sitting. And at that point, they said to me, you have a son, George? And I said, yeah. 
And he said to me, he died in his sleep last night. That was my first time hearing about Hazy. I found out he was zip tag and duct tape. And every time they do ask him a question, if he didn't know, they will throw the alcohol in his throat. And then until, until he couldn't again and he collapsed, and then they just, they just left him there. We had a big brother night, which it's just that you get your little brother absolutely drunk fast. And this was something that, that totally violated everything. I started speaking out against it. I was pinpointed as the, uh, the problem. And standing up to that helped me understand that, that I could actually make a difference. Um, started taking on leadership roles to make that change that I wish to see. Being able to say something and be the bigger person to step out and really stand up for what you believe in instead of just sitting by and letting it happen is really powerful. You know, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Clearly, if I need to be hazed to be inducted or initiated into an organization, they don't actually want me for who I am. I can understand uh, young people uh, being in a situation where they're unsure, uh, being intimidated uh, by circumstances where they don't do what they know in their heart is right to do. But that's basically, that's what killed my son. He believed, and I believe because I taught him, that you do unto others the way that you want others to do unto you. He didn't believe that you have to be beaten, or I had to beat somebody to get respect. The way you get respect is on the field when you play your instrument. I think if more of the girls had stood up, I think we could have kept the sorority intact and also changed the traditions within our sorority. wasn't one of those experiences that felt empowering or anything. It, it made me feel like I was a coward. And it made me feel like I was in the wrong for standing up for myself. But for somebody else to have been there and say, this is wrong, don't make her do this, would have just been the biggest relief to me. And I feel like it would have given me the strength to continue and stay at that institution. They all call themselves brother. What is your responsibility if you are really, really a brother? You're gonna be in that situation at some point. Like people, peer pressure is a thing. When you're put in those situations, you need to do the right thing. I would still have my brother if someone would have done something. It's important to know that you can make a difference. Notice the hazing, feel responsible to change it, and take action. I, I wish that People wouldn't be so scared of getting little write-ups in college and things like that that don't matter. And you know, when the alternative is someone losing their life. We can't just say no to hazing. We have to find other ways in which to accomplish the positive goals of group unity, team bonding, and building cohesion in a group, we have to find other positive, non-hazing ways in which to accomplish that. And it is possible. We can do that. There's a lot of different ways that you can come together and make people feel welcome, um, especially in team atmospheres. Some examples could be, you know, having a unique way to hand out uniforms um, at the beginning of the season, or maybe having a a uh, special place that you all go to together um, for a meal, or maybe it's, uh, oh, let's all go to the football game together and sit together. Those are great ways that you can, um, you know, have some traditions, um, healthy traditions and positive traditions. I'm going to treat a freshman with respect the same way that I'm going to treat a senior with respect. Um, we think it's really important because uh, when you get into a new situation, it's already intimidating, and so uh, it's the best thing to do is really make someone feel comfortable. 
Our guys like to do a lot of let's go golfing and make teams and see who the winner is or let's go bowling, make teams, see who the winner is. I think that's the biggest way we bond. We just treat each other as equals. All the new members, they receive an academic mentor, which is typically an older sister that's in the same major as them. So right off the bat, they have someone to go to. Uh, you know, usually there's one person that an underclassman will really look up to. And so as an upperclassman, you have to recognize that and kind of take them under your wing and just try to help them answer their questions and just make them feel included. Hazing is not the way to build a cohesive team. Instead, act like a family from the beginning. If you can do something to help another person or be kind, you do that. You don't just walk away from a bad situation. Because you can make a difference on your own. I am against hazing because it forces you to be someone who you're not. Think before you act. Think twice. If you gotta think about it a third time, it's, you probably, it's probably not what you should be doing. If you are a member of an organization that hazes and, and, and you go along with it, it could destroy your college experience. When it comes down to it, I think that it's on us to uh, make a difference in the generation that we are and to not think that hazing is a good tradition to keep going. My name is Noah Diversely and I lost my brother to hazing. Stop hazing. Show some respect.